Welcome everyone. I'm Bonita from Pennies to Dollars and today we are going to talk about my best tricks and things that I live by to keep my costs low so that I can afford not to work. I hope that these are helpful to you today. So let's get started. If you don't know me, I'm Bonita. I live in rural Kansas and I retired at the end of October. I say retired because I quit my job without having another job and I wasn't planning on going back to work at a full-time job. I do have some side income from YouTube, from TikTok, and some passive income from an investment that's very small. That's what I live on. I have a small savings compared to most people that retire, but I am not touching that savings and I am watching it grow. But I just wanted to introduce my living situation to you. I have worked 40 years. I was tired of working. And so I started really defining and tweaking all of the ways that I was saving money in my home and in my life so that I could get the maximum benefit for my dollar. So grab your drink. Let's sit down and discuss it. I made an iced coffee today at home because I have figured out how to make one where I like it better than any of the coffee shops. And so that saves me money. Plus I'm an hour from a coffee shop one way. So yeah, I'm not going to get coffee while I'm at home. But let's talk about the ways. Now I have notes here because I don't want to leave any of them out. I feel like they're all super important. So I hope that they can maybe shed some light for you or give you some ideas, maybe spark an idea for you on how you can save money in your own living situation. The first one is a very simple one. We DIY everything we can. We do it ourselves while we're still able to do it ourselves. We mow our own grass. We do all of our own painting. We wash our own vehicles. We don't have a club car membership or anything like that where you go in and pay monthly so you can wash and vacuum your car. We drag the vacuum out into the yard, plug it in with an extension cord and vacuum our vehicles. We do every single thing we can ourselves first before we ever try to get anybody else to do something for us that we actually have to pay for. Now there are a few exceptions to those rules and I'm going to talk about that. The second tip is to really know where you live. And by saying that, I just spent the last three and a half months in the Rio Grande Valley in Texas. I was living in my RV for the winter. That's one of the fun things that I can afford to do. Now that I'm retired, that was one of my dreams was to winter somewhere other than Kansas where it was warmer. Now this took me to a whole different environment that I didn't know about. I wasn't familiar with the stores, the shopping, some of the foods were different, some of the brands were different. And I spent that three and a half months trying to learn the area to figure out where was the best place for me to shop for certain things? And was it even worth my time to go to different stores? Because down there, they were not clustered together. There was quite a few miles in between each store. So I had to really define where is the best place to shop? And depending on what is on my list and what I need the most, where am I shopping at today? And I had got closer to figuring some of this out, but honestly, it takes more than three and a half months, but I was still learning in that amount of time. Now, where I'm living at right now, I've been here for 25 years, actually 26. And for the past 26 years, seven and a half of those years, we ran a grocery store. So I did not have that experience in those years of finding out where was the best places to shop. But the other years I used that experience and a lot of our stores here are clustered together. So you can go somewhere and there is a Dillon's, a Walmart and an Aldi 
all in the same corner of that block area. And it's that way several places throughout the city that's about an hour from me. So I have learned which places do I get produce at? Which places do I buy the loss leaders? And I go around like that. And if there's nothing else that I can find that fall in those two categories, then I might go to the third store to get something if it's cheaper. But they're all clustered together, so it doesn't take a lot of effort. But this is one of the things that is one of my tips. Know where you live and learn those areas where you can get the best value. The third tip is that I like to use local as much as possible. And I have found that a lot of local things, which might surprise people, are cheaper. And let me give you some examples. We do get our oil changed, but we get it at a local shop that's about a seven mile drive versus going to the city, which is an hour drive. We not only save gas, but we save $24 per oil change from going to the city. That's one of those local hacks and those contact hacks that I'm telling you about now. I have contacts. I have someone that put on my roof brand new metal roof quite a few years back for $9,000. I couldn't even get anyone to come from the city to even give me a bid. They said I was too far, but I found a local person that did it for even less, even though the city wouldn't even come out here. It would have been so much more. I also found a local person to remodel my bathroom from a bathtub to a walk-in shower. I have some health issues. I needed a walk-in shower and I got it done for about $3,000. And if you know how much having a walk-in shower put in costs you, it is about double that. So, I know those local contacts. I have local plumbers. We have a local hardware store that will come from about 12 miles away and it will do anything wrong with our well. It will fix any broken pipes in the walls. Those places for us are even cheaper than going to the big companies. We save a ton of money doing it that way. So that is my third tip. Have contacts for things where you know you can go in a situation like a broken pipe that is your best value. So living somewhere for any length of time actually helps you build on that value because you learn where you can shop, where you can get the best deals, what you can have help with if you can't DIY it. So if it's possible for you to live in the same place for a longer period of time, you will build those contacts and you will build that list of where you can get the best deals. If that's possible for you, even if you move to stay in the same area, it does have its benefits. My next tip is to stay on top of rising costs and realize through that process what you're still willing to pay for and what maybe you are willing to let go by the wayside or do a lot less. I remember when haircuts used to be $7 and then $9 and now they're $16 at those discount haircutting places. $16 and then a tip. That's one of the things that I've cut way back on because I've kept apprised of those rising costs. Now I maybe get my hair cut once a year. I used to get it twice a year. I'm sometimes before that I used to get it every quarter. I have continued to cut back on some of those things and trim my hair myself because I don't want to pay double what it used to cost me. So stay apprised of some of those service costs and base your budget on whether or not it's still worth the value to you to spend that money. My next tip is I use every free app version that I can of anything. I don't like to pay a monthly membership fee, a monthly subscription fee. We have a Roku box 
and we only have two subscriptions to Amazon Prime and to Hulu, which cost about $25 a month. I remember when our cable had gotten to $180 a month before we canceled it and started using the Roku box with all of the free apps on there. I also use the free Pacer app on my phone to track my steps. I don't have an Apple Watch or any type of tracking system that costs me money. I use the free version. I use the free version of my Fitness Pal to track my calories. I use the free version of Canva to make my thumbnails for my YouTube. I use the free version of ClipChamp to edit my videos that's on my computer. Anything that is a free version, that is what I pick. Even when I travel, I don't take the toll roads. I have my GPS on my phone set up to avoid tolls, and I take the shortest route that is not a toll road. Tolls have gotten so expensive. We used to drive about three and a half hours to go see my husband's parents, and the tolls would be about $3. Those have also doubled each direction. And my last tip is I keep my temptations low. I don't have an Amazon app on my phone. I've never had that. I have to sit down at the computer. I have to go into Amazon each and every time if I decide to look for something or price something or possibly order something. None of that is on my phone to be at my fingertips. That makes me less impulsive to just click that order button. I have found that the faster we can replace something, the more likely we'll do that rather than repair it. How many of us have a sewing pile that has sat around forever and we just haven't got to it? That's why I don't have those apps on my phone because it's easier to replace than repair. I also keep my temptations low by not buying processed, packaged, boxed, frozen types of dinners or foods. It is so much easier to grab a box of something and make it versus making the actual ingredients. And so I rarely buy anything like that unless I see it on sale with a really good deal, then I might pick it up. Those foods, if we keep them in our homes, we will use them faster because they are easier and quicker to make, which means we go through them quicker and we need to replace them quicker and they're usually more expensive. So by not purchasing those, I have to use my ingredients to make a meal. Many times those boxed items, what's in there, costs so much more than buying the ingredients to actually make them. How many times do we just not feel like cooking? So those items will be grabbed first if we have them in our kitchen. And it's the same with eating out. When we don't feel like cooking, we sometimes will go eat out. And that's one of the things with living in the country. It's not so much of a temptation because we have to drive each way a long ways to go eat out and then wait for our food and then drive that long distance home. So it's not so much of a temptation for me. And sometimes those convenience foods, if you purchase them, can be a way to keep you from going out to eat if those temptations are convenient for you. But for me, none of that is convenient. So if I just cut back on those pre-boxed items and pre-packaged items, then I'm made to cook from scratch. Just because something is popular doesn't mean that it's right for me. And I remember that all the time as I'm going through these steps. I don't have an air fryer. I have a small kitchen work area and I try not to buy any more extra appliances, even if they will save time because I just don't have the space to use them or store them. I don't have the Stanley cup. I don't have earbuds. I don't have any of those new items. And I know that they're all very popular and a lot of people will say they are worth the money. But for me, if I just avoid the temptation and life goes on the way it's always gone on, I don't miss something that I've never had.
So I hope that you've enjoyed this video. And if you have, please give me a big thumbs up. I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments. And I hope to see you in the next video.